Well, good afternoon. My name is Rita here from the Wood County Committee on Aging. I am so grateful to have Mike McMaster here, um, who's the education coordinator for the Wood County Museum. And so without further ado, Mike, go ahead and take it away. Start All right, I will uh, share my screen here at the desktop. And close a few things, go to my slide, take just a second, and we'll begin sharing. Two, Let's see, there we go, much better. Uh, my name is Mike McMaster. I work at this building, the Wood County Museum um, that you might know as the old county home they used from 1869 to 1971. Um, that magnolia tree in the center already has bloomed. Um, the garden that you see has been greatly um, updated. And there are many new things on um, exhibit at the museum. Um, today we are going to talk um, about a man that we've talked about before. Um, that is Charles Evers. And this is the history of Wood County. By the way of the life of Charles Evers, it is the history of Wood County through his life. And this is part one, his um, early life all the way to the Civil War. And his life parallels the history of Wood County. Um, now, Charles White Evers was born in a cabin along the Maumee River in Wood County in 1837. He grew up in Plain Township at the very end of the pioneering days of the Great Black Swamp. Um, Evers, however, is best remembered as a newspaper man and the author of the pioneer scrapbook of Wood County, which was published in 1910, shortly after his death and is available at, I believe, almost every single um, public library in Wood County. Um, now let's talk about his parents. Where did they come from? On March 30th, 1835, John Evers and Celinda White were married in Wood County, Ohio. Um, there is their um, certificate uh, filled out by um, the clerk, um, John Webb, um, in um, May of 1835. Now, it is interesting to note who the Justice of the Peace who signed by the clerk was, and his name was Guy Nearing. Charles Evers writes extensively about Uncle Guy Nearing. Now, Guy Nearing um, became a Justice of the Peace in Perrysburg in 1817. Um, the Indians, supposedly, as Charles Evers writes, called him Big Nawash, and he is extensively written about in. Um, the Pioneer Scrapbook. Um, Evers describes him as a man of gigantic stature and strength, broad shoulder and bony. He scarcely knew his own strength and his power of endurance was something wonderful. He was sort of a local Hercules of that day and a terror to the Indians, great and small. Um, he also was loved and trusted by his fellow man. Um, Guy Nearing and his associates moved the Wood County Jail piece by piece from Maumee to Perrysburg in 1824. Um, they also built the first Wood County Courthouse in 1826, of course, in Perrysburg. Nearing also built a section of the Maumee and Western Reserve Pike that ran from Lower Sandusky, Fremont um, to Perrysburg. And Guy Nearing became a commissioner in Wood County in 1834. Um, Charles Evers writing about him, um, he tries to make him into a local legend. And 
Evers describes Uncle Guy nearing his death at Providence, Ohio, at the hands of seven Irishmen armed with clubs. And Evers write, he whipped five of them, but had seven of his ribs dislocated from his backbone, from which he died about a year after a fever, which destroyed um, Providence, in 1840. Charles Evers never knew Guy Nearing. He would have been about three years old when this happened. Obviously, he heard these stories growing up from his father and his father's neighbor, Neptune Nearing. He also writes about Guy Nearing almost uh, uh, 50 years after his death. Now, who, his mother, Celinda White's father, was Johnson White. Johnson White was Charles Evers' grandfather, and he was a pioneering ferryman from Waterville to Miltonville, which, of course, is a long-gone town. Um, White also served as one of the judges in the first election of Milton Township. That is the Miltonville uh, a uh, sign where Miltonville stood. Um, um, Johnson White, his grandfather, um, and his parents, that is where they lived when they were first married. Now, William Fowler and Milton Baird built on the Maumee River um, perhaps the very first river born sawmill and dam on the Maumee. It probably went not clear across, but from the island near Miltonville. Very interesting story. I believe the photo on the left with that arrow pointing to the dam was Fowler and Baird's um, sawmill. Now, Charles Evers' paternal grammar, his father's mother, in her childhood had been taken captive by the Indians with whom she lived for seven years. This occurred in Western Pennsylvania. Although Charles Evers never met his grandmother, he most likely heard his father talk about his experiences. Charles Evers stayed at the age of 13, she ran away from the Indians to escape an abhorrent marriage with the chief's son, whom she disliked. With all the hardship she endured in common with the Indians while in captivity, they treated her kindly and she always had a sympathetic word for them. After she came west, her house was a great resort for them because she fed them and could talk with them both in word and sign language. Now, John Evers' father and um, his mother um, moved his family from Western Pennsylvania to Wayne County. Char John Evers, his father, became an apprentice carpenter and cabinet maker. In 1835, John moved to Maumee, which was the year Lucas County was formed from a portion of Wood County. So his life and his father's life parallels the formation of Lucas and a lot of Wood County. Now, Charles Evers was born in Miltonville on July 22nd, 1837. A few years later, um, he would have perhaps been a baby, could not remember this move. John Evers moved his family to a section 34 in Plain Township, where he purchased a 40-acre tract. Now, John Evers, Charles Evers' father, John, he bought that land from no other than Neptune Nearing, the son of Uncle Guy Nearing. Neptune Nearing was also a cabinet maker, like his father, by trade, but spent most of his time parceling and selling his father's land contracts. As a close neighbor, a young Charles Evers probably heard these stories from Neptune Nearing and his father conversing um, in Old Wood County. Now, Charles Evers also had notable neighbors. 
in Section 34 of Plain Township. His notable neighbors include the Indian missionary Reverend Isaac Van Tassel and his wife Lucia Badger Van Tassel. When the Reverend uh, Van Tassel died in 1847, Evers would have been about 12 years old. And Van Tassel gives him stories about the legends of Shutnock and other Indian stories in Wood County. And he probably visited um, the Van Tassels. The mission school would have been long gone before um, Charles Evers' time. Now, Lucia Badger Van Tassel, her father was also a notable neighbor um, Reverend Van Tassel's father-in-law, Joseph Badger, came to Perrysburg when the Reverend Badger died in 1846 at the age of 90. Charles Evers would have been about 10 years old and either heard stories about Reverend Badger from the Van Tassels. He might have met him himself. And Reverend Badger was an important figure in Wood County history. Um, Reverend Joseph Badger was born in Massachusetts in 1757. At the age of 18, Badger fought the British at the battle, as we would note, of Bunker Hill. In 1775, the Battle of Cobble Hill in Brooklyn with George Washington in 1776 and crossed the Delaware River in the middle of the winter um, in 1777, and the stories he could have told um, young Charles Evers um, would have been extraordinary. Evers writes extensively about this man who he may or may not have met. He writes that Reverend Badger was a man of deep piety, greatly respected by all, kind and generous, was never known to refuse a favor and would render assistance to an Indian or even a dog. Now, Reverend Badger was principal opposed to hunting on the Sabbath, hunting on Sunday. Um, hardy but careless pioneers out hunting, if they chanced past near the house on Sunday to hunt, always went far around his house so as not to be observed by Reverend Badger. Now, it was Evers who gave us the 1851 story of the notorious Stoga Hole, long since gone in Liberty Township. And he gives us the origin of the Devil's Hole between Fenton um, along um, Devil's Hole Road. Um, the Stoga Hole story would have been between West and East to about where he lived. His older brother and his friend rescued lost people from the Stoga Hole. Now, at the time, Evers would have been too young. He gets these stories from his older brother and his brother's friend. Now, the legend um, in 1840s, Charles Evers, as a child, must have explored the hill known as Shutnock. Um, the legend ever spees, er, spins about in his pioneer scrapbook came from his neighbor, Isaac Van Tassel. Um, the, there is Shutnock. I have given the legend of Shutnock in one of my stories very close to where Evers grew up. He probably climbed that hill and listened to his neighbors tell ghost stories about it. Now, among other things, he was a student in the 1840s. Evers attended district number two school in Plain Township. As he grew older, Evers was a teacher in Plain Township. He most likely taught at a small log schoolhouse. It is interesting to note 
that Charles Evers in his Pioneer Scrapbook was very sentimental about growing up at this time and of his school days. And he begins the book with the poem about his school experience. And he writes, give me back the dear old days, the pathways through the dells, to the schoolhouse in the blossoms, the sound of far off bells, tinkling across the meadows, the song of bird and brook, the old time dictionary and black spelling book. Very sentimental about the old days when he wrote this that were long, long gone. In 1865, Charles Evers left Plain Township and he headed to Kansas to get government land for a farm. However, this is interesting to note about Charles Evers. On the way to Kansas, he heard of a location of a man in Minnesota who owed him money. Instead of going to Kansas, he went to Minnesota, found this man and collected his debt, then returned to Wood County. He was not a man to let someone um, get away with owing him money. In 1859, Charles Evers attended Oberlin College until he enlisted in the Civil War. In 1861, Charles Evers, his enlistment was unlike Wood County men. He enlisted in Company H of the 2nd Kentucky Volunteer Infantry Regiment, which was formed near Cincinnati. In April 6th and 7th of 1862, Evers and his regiment took part in the Battle of Shiloh, which to that point was the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. Um, one thing Mr. Evers takes pride in is the fact that he carried his musket faithfully and never missed a march or battle of his regiment until wounded and captured at the Battle of Chickamauga in September of 1863, which ended his army service. His older brother, John Evers, was killed in Cedar Mountain, Virginia in August of 1862. After two months imprisonment, Evers fortunately was pardoned at Richmond. In November of 1863, he was transferred to United States Hospital in Annapolis, Maryland, just in time to seek treatment for his injured leg and prevent it from being amputated. And he left the army in June of 1864. Now, Charles Evers died in 1909. His remains were bought to, brought to Bowling Green via the interurban, the electric interurban, paralleling Wood County's history and taken to the Evers block where he is now interned at Oak Grove Cemetery. Um, next month, we are scheduled for the history of Wood County by the way of the life of Charles Evers, part two. And there is nothing in Wood County history that he does not claim he started. And that's the last slide I have. Now, every Friday, we post a history post on our museum's Facebook page. You can also visit the museum's website. Our Facebook page and website are always updated. The museum is open seven days a week, except for county holidays, Monday through Friday, 10 to 4, Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 4. We have a mission for adults, seniors, students, um, and veterans, and a price for children. Now, what is on display on the left is people, places, and things, thousands of photos of Wood County, some from our time period, some from 100 years before our time period. On the right 
is the history of the poor farms, the county homes in Ohio, with photos of what they look like today and how the county home system ran. On display now is the Marion Carl Bach exhibit. If you ever remember seeing this exhibit at the museum or the courthouse, we now tell the entire story of this event. They are not just random on a shelf with no interpretation. If you visit the museum and read these panels, you will know more about this than most people in Wood County. Now, if you come to the Wood County Museum, especially on a rainy, dark day, please park behind the museum in the well-marked handicapped spots and enter through the museum elevator, which goes from the ground floor outside to the first and second floor. The old, outdated handicap ramp do not use if you can. Now, um, that is the last slide I have. I will stop sharing my screen. There we go, Rita, you are back on. Yeah, well, does anybody have um, comments or questions for Mike today? I did mute everybody, but you can unmute yourselves if you would like to share something. I was wondering, Mike, about the timetable of the movement of the county seat in Wood County between Perrysburg, Maumee, Bowling Green. You, could you shed some light on that? Yeah, the county seat was moved from Maumee to Perrysburg. Uh, I believe the slice said 1835 or 1836. I don't have it all memorized. It was moved to Bowling Green, I believe in 1868, which is a slide on next month's part two. And there's nothing in Wood County history that Charles Evers does not claim as his own. Hmm. So please stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> yep, we've got him scheduled for next month. Um, so keep an May, eye out. For yeah, the June 2nd. And also we have November and December already scheduled. Yes. Thank you again, Mike, for everything that you do for us. Oh, yeah, thank you. And, uh, All done Jordan, together, Mike. Oh, hope, hope to Dave, see you before you November or December in person, Mike. Yeah, hopefully. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> That's always our goal, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, thank, you. Yeah, thank you, Rita. I'm going to leave the meeting now. And um, thank you. I will see you in June for part two, the important part two of this story. Yeah. Thank you so uh, thank much. Thank you very much, yes. Have a good day, everybody. You thank too. You.